What's up, guys? Welcome to The Flow Live. Uh, a podcast by One Wheelers uh, about life and one wheeling and stuff. This is our guest, Jake Leary. What's up, everybody? Some of you may know him as uh, the professor or Professor Leary. An absolute legend in the one wheel community. An OG rider, an OG Flow Live team member. You've probably seen a lot of his clips and videos. One of the steeziest riders on the scene, without a doubt. Used to be a New York local. Now moved out here. So uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, Jake. Um, when you get it? How'd you get into one wheeling? I actually uh, became a one wheel dealer. Like I didn't just buy a one wheel before I, you even got your own board. That was my first board. Yeah, the first one wheel I ever saw was at Burning Man. I had dreamed Sick. about like a similar device, you know, just from doing skateboarding and balance boarding. Uh, I saw this guy riding one and I was like, I was like, oh yo, could I try that? And he was like, yeah. But he also didn't like stop or slow down or anything. I think <laughs> in his mindset, he didn't really realize that yeah. I couldn't try it out. Yeah. Uh, so then, yeah, a couple of years later, uh, became a one wheel dealer. And that demo board, like, just became my board, like, pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, That's sick. Just fell in love, yeah, like, instantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because you, you had a bike shop back in New York, right? Yeah. Uh, it was called the Bike Truck. It was originally an actual truck that I drove around. Yeah. Uh, eventually became a brick and mortar. That's badass. Was um, it in, like a, like, a box truck, food truck style? Classic? Yeah. I had, like, the customer window put on the side so you could, yeah. like, open up on the side. And, That's badass. Uh, what yeah. made you switch from the van to the store? Oh, it was a logistical nightmare. Like, okay. New York City traffic, like, trying, having appointments or just it, absolute nightmare. Yeah, that sounds Parking horrible tickets to and, deal with. Yeah. <laughs> um, got, the truck only lasted a couple years. Uh, but I kept the name. Um, kept the bike truck name. And you even made your own bikes, too, right? Yeah. You weren't just selling other people's bikes? Yeah, the concept was um, just, like, a really easy way to customize a bike, not just online, but in person where they could actually try out different handlebars. Right. And I got really into like the body mechanics of riding a bike. Okay. And, you know, a lot of people don't set up their seat properly and then have knee problems or don't even put their foot uh, on the pedal in the proper spot. So I got, yeah. re- that's how I really got into just like the body mechanics of yeah. like riding a vehicle. Interesting. And, um, that definitely translated into one wheeling, like trying to sure. teach people how to um, use their bodies on on the one wheel. And, right, yeah. that's awesome. So then, what area of New York was that shop in? You were in Manhattan, right? I grew up in Manhattan. That was in Brooklyn, though. It was in Brooklyn. My shop was okay. In Brooklyn, right, right, yeah. right. And then you moved out here. You first, you first, you uh, snowbirded out here, right? Right. It was just the winter. Yeah. A little test. A little, just dipping my toes. Let me see what's in. up. Yeah. Uh, winter is a good time to leave New York. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I did the winter between 2020, 2021. Right. Um, then I, that was when I was working here full time. Right. Um, tied up some loose ends in New York and moved back full time uh, yeah. a little over a year ago. Aliyah yeah. Sacramentian. Yeah. Sick. The, uh, I'm new myself. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm an implant right. too. What, uh, how, how is Sacramento different from New York? Because they're both like, kind of you know cities but new york is massively way bigger, i guess more yeah. more so in what ways is sacramento similar to new york that's probably an easier question to answer well what i like about i live downtown so what right. i like about this city is that i can walk bike one wheel pretty much everywhere that i need to go right but the good thing about sacramento is that i can leave my house driving within two minutes be doing 75 on the freeway right and you can drive an hour from SAC in any direction and just be at insane nature. For sure. Um, so that part is very different. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I like it here. Yeah, less less and, concrete jungle vibes. Yeah. <laughs> of course, the wakeboarding and the one-wheel yep. community. Yep, like, the river. It's kind of like a mecca for one-wheeling and for yeah. board sports. Here. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, that's one of my favorite things about Sacramento, too, that it's such a hub. Like, how many highways converge here? Like, four or five highways yeah. all come to uh, yeah. Sacramento and wrap around the town and just fan out to Santa Cruz, San 
San, uh, San Francisco, San Jose, Tahoe, Reno. Uh, I was just talking to somebody the other day. There's a thing around here they call the California Grand Slam where Jeff added one wheeling into it. But essentially, it's the idea is you do all the board sports in one day. And like the ultimate California Grand Slam. So I think the OG Grand Slam, because it's like three bases, is s- s- snowboarding, skating, right. surfing yeah. in one day. Yeah. And so you like start snowboarding or you start surfing because you definitely like got to start with one or the other and finish with one or the other. Probably depending on where you're going to surf and what the tide is like. And you do all three in a day. But then Jeff made it extra complicated and added one wheeling and cable wake. Oh. So in one day. Six. But okay. the, one of the ways that makes it possible, I think, is that he does river like boat surfing. Right. Instead of surfing in the ocean. So that it's makes like it a lot more doable. Snowboard, yeah. skate, one wheel, wakeboard at the cable, and then wakeboard, surf behind the boat. And that's like the float like life grand slam. If you had like <laughs> a, a trailer with a little mini ramp on the drive from Tahoe back to Sac, like you could Find do your spot. skating like yeah. on the drive. <laughs> oh, yo, like a, the half five on a trailer. That's like some like you're Tony skating, skating moving. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would that be would the be way. That would be wild. Do you want to be really efficient? Yeah. <laughs> like, that would feel really weird, probably, to skate on a ramp while the car's moving. Cause like pushing, dropping in and uh, trying to they, go one way versus the other oh, way would man. probably uh, be so the brakes, you just gone. Yeah. Wing. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Uh, yeah, you won't catch me doing that. Nah. Uh, hell no. no. Yeah, Sacramento's uh, a sick spot. Um I definitely Absolutely. enjoy it out here. It's very similar to where I come from, Boulder. Uh, kind of like small city vibes, a little bit of suburban, and then you can cruise up in the mountains. But I, I like it out here for a lot of like the music and the culture and a lot of the stuff that's going on. Like, uh, okay. The West Coast vibe. Is More like, than Boulder? Sure. Like, yeah. yeah. Nice. Boulder's got a really cool like climbing, outdoorsy, mm-hmm. health, hippie culture. Yeah. But there's not quite as much like music and art and like street art and um, skateboarding and all that kind of stuff is a lot more prevalent out here. There's a lot more like brands and events and filmers and writers and shit. I mean, that shredding and all that stuff spans across the globe and across the nation, but I definitely, I love the the flavor out here and how much stuff's going on for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of street art, a lot of great bars and restaurants and good nightlife. Yeah, the right. You got a little foam mount on the uh, old. Oh, dude, this is this is coffee, dude. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't have foam. <laughs> <laughs> Cappuccino. <laughs> uh, shoot. Well, dude, it's it's still early in the year. It's a new year. We've got products finally coming out for the GT. We've got the Vesk stuff popping off. You can tune pints now to ride like XRs. There's a lot of board options going on in the one wheel atmosphere right now. What you, you do? What do you think is going to be like your go to board for this year? Between your XR, your GT, you have a Vesk too, right? I I have a Vesk controller. I haven't set it up yet because I haven't found like a controller box option that I like and that I can it. like you know recommend. Like this is the one to get. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, past couple months, I haven't been one wheeling that much. So I haven't been motivated to, um, you know, put new mods on my board. Just been doing more snowboarding and skating right. and stuff. Um, but right now, yeah, the XR is my, my go-to. That's the go-to. Yeah. Um, CBXR, W rails. Um, yep. it's really my trail board, but I kind of use it for, for, for everything. everything. Like that's yeah. what I brought to wheel fun weekend. With the wood sides. Um, yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's the main one. Yeah, you've been riding that thing for a minute. That's a good board. Um, like I said, excited to test out the float wheel. Yeah, we'll have dude. to see if if that uh, is maybe better than a one wheel. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll see. It sure um, seems like it's going to be more powerful and potentially yeah. faster. They're claiming something yeah. like eight or nine horsepower, which is nuts. Yeah, that, I mean. But it'll be heavy. It could be dangerous. I, I like, I don't need to go any faster. <laughs> but if the 
the speed is there, I <laughs> will be tempted to use it at the same time. So, totally. Yeah, 100%. Um, but it is nice, like, at any speed, like, to know that that motor has a lot more to right. output. Right. You're, like, more Because that's, that's really what yeah. appeals to me when, when you're talking about higher speeds and more power and stuff, is I'm not necessarily trying to take that and go 35. Because I can't run 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Like, I've always said, I don't like to ride faster than I can run unless, like… The camera's rolling or money's on the line. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a board with the power where you can go that you can take it there, what that means is when you're at your, what are now the top speeds, your low twenties, your motor still has so much power to hold you up. So if you yeah. make miscalculations and missteps in your weight distribution, that nose and tail still has tons of power to keep you up and you're yeah. able to just bomb at a high speed. But then, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some people that just, like any other device in the world, they're just gonna hop on that and try to set the top speed. Yeah. See, like, how fast can I go? Oh, the first week, <laughs> someone's gonna do 40 or something. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna be pretty crazy. I think yeah. that my biggest concern with the float wheel, honestly, is the weight because that's my biggest beef with the GT right now. Like, right. the dubs have significantly helped with the weight and the wobbliness, but yeah. it's still the GT is still this big, heavy board. And trying to do right. certain like freestyle tricks and quick movements, it's just so clunky. Yeah. But you get that trade off for the power, and like having that power is really, really nice. You have so much more to work with, like we're just discussing. But the float wheel is potentially going to be even, even bigger than the. Is GT. it more? Do you know what it weighs in at? I can't remember. I might be totally capping, but I think it was like thirty eight, dude. But that just really? sounds so heavy. We'll have to check. We'll, yeah, we uh, should we should check. Remember it was Colton, can you look this up? Thank you. We got an engineer, baby. Huh. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah, I'm really excited to see how that goes. The tilt controller vests have been really fun to ride. Yeah. That's like got me really jazzed. Jess has Je Jess. Jeff has a controller hooked up to his 84 volt vest. And we've been messing around with it. We took it uh, riding with the Braille skateboarding homies over in the oh, Bay Area nice. recently. Nice. And we were at this one spot where there's like a, a retaining wall log, you know, where there's just like a fatty log going across. And it creates like a two-foot drop with the lip of the log at the top. Okay. And it was, it was pretty big. It wasn't bonkable. It was nudgeable. And we were doing some nudge tricks over it. And then Jeff was like, yo, Kyle… See if you can lift the nose and bonk this. And Kyle grabbed the controller, jumped on the vest, lifted the nose, came into it full speed. And since he was able to get his nose up as high as it can go without breaking at all and maintaining right. all his speed, he was able to come into it and just fucking launch. Fattest ball I've ever seen in my life. And then that same spot, we were like, maybe we could do a nose slide here now. So we set up some sticks as a little ramp and then put a down log. And then I came into it. It was a bit of a battle. Probably took like 10, 15 minutes. But I nose up with the controller. Was able to launch off and get my nose up over the log. And wow. do the log downside. And the GT, I just smacked the corner every time. You oh, know, when yeah. you're trying to do a slide that's just a little too tall. And yeah. you just can't get the board to like get that last little bit. And you just smack corner and it comes off. Yeah, and you're really limited. Like if you need to get the nose up or down, that will break or accelerate your board. So right. I bet you could… Just nudge without even moving your legs, with only moving the <laughs> controller. Yeah, maybe that would be All so right? like, crazy. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of potential there. Ren, so we just had the uh, Wheel Fun Weekend 3 race in San Diego that I mm -hmm. took the dub. Let's go on the Yeah, dub. congrats. Yeah. And thank you. And Ren, huh. uh, Ren was there on his vest with his controller tilting on every bump. Wow. He was trying to like, I think he was li lifting. I think he was using it to keep the tail up. Mm, I don't think he was yeah. using it to go up, up it. I think okay. he was using it to keep the tail up because that's the battle on the pump track. And that's kind of the thing I have slightly figured out, which I had the advantage, is keeping your tail off the ground. Because those bumps are yeah. designed for bikes to like pop bikes up and keep them pumping hella fast. Yeah. And so with the wheels, as you know, if you come off, if you don't pop it quite right, the tail just wants to smack down and like drag super bad. And it still yeah. taps. Like I still, if you listen to the videos of all the races, you, you can hear it. All Everyone goes up over the bumps. Oh, it's yeah. like, <laughs> there's yeah. those little taps. But when you get the real fatty 
slide. You're, you're fooked. But Ren was using the controller. And it was funny because Dado cruised up to him. I heard him talking about it. And Dado, if you don't know, is one of the main guys working on this VEX project, doing a lot of the, the heavy lifting. He comes up to him. He's like, are you using the remote? And Ren's like, yeah. And Dado just looked at him like he's nuts. He's like, <laughs> what? Really? And he's like, on every bump? And Ren's like, every bump, dude. I'm doing it. I'm kind of lacing it. He's like, but if I mess up, I'm fucked. <laughs> yeah. Because if you miscalculate it, you'll just dig yourself. Yeah. The timing is key. Yeah. Yeah. Because like in the implementation that Kyle and I were using it, it was like pull, let go. You know, right. so there wasn't like a ton of thinking to that like one when you use it for one thing. Like you know you're going to drop down a steep hill. You know you need to lift your tail. You just lift your tail, get down the hill, let go, and you go back to business. But like over and over through a whole course sitting there like manipulating your board to be at its best level through that whole thing yeah. is like just crazy to think about. You probably could develop that skill and utilize it in that way. But it's kind of nuts that he was trying to do that. And he did well. He crushed it. Yeah. And did super good in the race. It's like on just on top of everything else you're already doing on the one wheel. It's like another Yeah, thing. you gotta like sure break off a piece of your it. brain and because like with the thousands of miles we have on one wheels, it it's very intuitive. Like it feels like it's just part of us. I'm sure mm -hmm. you get enough miles with the remote. Like it would tap into that that you, muscle get it down. memory yeah. system. So Colton looked it up and there's no clear weight. Uh, displayed anywhere for the board yet but we're seeing a lot of heavier than gt in the comments and stuff like that jake saying Oops. he might have the weight in his email i have 16.2 sorry 26.3 kilograms and i can't convert, uh, I need that, to convert that to pounds but then i need to take my phone <laughs> yeah, what's the conversion for oh, that's a quick uh wait wait what sorry it was 16.3 pounds 20 kilos, yeah. Oh, so like 36 pounds probably. 36 pounds. Yeah, I said 38. 36. Yeah. That's pretty heavy. I think the GT is 28. No, no. XR I think is about 28. XR GT was like 30. One or two maybe? 30, Low 30s? Two or 33. I don't know. So that's like an, that's an extra like two, three pounds. Probably be noticeable. It's noticeable. Like I'm, yeah. I notice. Wait, when no, I, GT might be 35. Actually, 35. I think the CB is like 32 ish. Okay. Um, I mean, I definitely notice a major difference in my board when I even just change like from a cush low to a cush wide. You know, you feel that little bit of extra weight in the back, and then yeah. when you go from like a XR to a GT, you definitely feel that weight change. Yeah, majorly. It, like takes a few miles to get in tune with that so yeah anything that's more than like a 10 percent difference like you can definitely yeah feel that yeah and i'm curious what his plan is with like firmware and programming like if he's just gonna tap into the vest stuff and tell people to load up the vest firmware or if he's working on something i'm really curious to see how how he's gonna format that it's uh supposed to be charge and ride like you don't need to set it up or go through all these settings really like you can just you just turn on uh, and go yeah allegedly huh that's kind of um, sick yeah. as long as it rides well and then you can always mess with the settings with the vesk tool yeah um hmm. to change yeah anything you can change on your vesk it's a trip um well all right you ride an xr this year you didn't switch to the gt you're not down with the gt I never like the one thing I do like it for is just cruising around town, coming a off of commuter. a off of a stoplight, off of a red light. Like it accelerates faster, and yeah, you can go faster just kind of cruising around. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, I don't know if I I never felt like I needed more speed going right. XR to GT, mm -hmm. and then when I got the GT, I like always used that extra speed when yeah. I'm just riding around. <laughs> um, so I do like that, but yeah, just all like the weight and the yeah. top heaviness, um, or just like the you know the thicker platform. Yeah, uh, my She's board's lowered, boy. so it's not more right top heavy. But yeah, shout out for that lower kit. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah, you didn't know he makes yeah. that lower kit. It's true. They're in stock. <laughs> <laughs> in stock now at fulllife.com. Yeah, uh, lower your board. But um, 
Yeah, overall, I still like it's it's really that rim, that six inch rim. Dude. Like, just it's so much the more six comfy. and a half inch rim on the GT is probably my biggest gripe with the board. Yeah, this there there is no space there to work with. I, you're hitting your rim left and right. Yeah, all the time, and you there's no like like side volume to the tire. Like when you're I yeah. when I try to turn into a bonk, I crack your rim. crack the rim every time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I think if they went five rims. and a half, yeah, yeah dude, it, they should have gone five and a half instead of six and a half. Mm. I get trying to make a proprietary rim that makes sense in certain mindsets, but to go smaller would have been sicker. I feel like you'd get more like low end torque out of the motor too, with like it being a little smaller in diameter, right? Because it's less tire. Well, the to tire turn would on. still be the same, and then you might have some yeah, people say you could feel the lag in the tire the if it's a bigger tire but i don't oh, think that would really be noticeable on a one probably wheel. not on a one wheel. yeah if you're doing a race car doing 200 miles an it's hour gripping you know, like with but 500 horses yeah one wheel i i don't think you would notice the torque really um but someday i think i think we'll I'm, i hope we see smaller hubs someday me too um somebody's gotta make it yeah. so where are you gonna take this one wheel xr this year there's a lot of events there's ORL sanctioned yeah. races. There's unsanctioned races. There's events popping up that haven't been around yet. This year is pretty packed. Where yeah. are you going to be this year? I think the next one coming up is Lemonade Float Fest. That's like March, end of March. Out in Austin, yeah. In you Austin. Going to that? Yeah, I've been wanting to go to Austin for like 10 years. It's been Sick. top of my list. I just never mm -hmm. got out there. Um, and now, like, the stand-up comedy scene in Austin's blowing up, so hopefully see a comedy show or something. Yeah. Uh, always been really good for live music. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I want to try to spend, like, a week there at least. Sick. Um, then there's Let It Ride, Vegas. Yep. Um, uh, Shredfest, the next one after that? You're going to, well, after Let It um, Ride, there's Oak City Shredfest and Dirt Surfers yeah. out on the East Coast. Yeah. I'm and gonna, the Northwest Electric Fest is somewhere amidst all this. July, I think. Are they July? I think so. I don't have the dates memorized for that one. Um, but that was fun. I love Oregon. Yeah, Oregon's sick. Um, and that one, You yeah. went last year? Yeah. Cool. That was their first time. Or was it their first? It was my first time going. I'm pretty sure it was their first time putting it on. Um, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. It was a really fun event. Good races and everything? Yeah. Was it, it was all the camping together? Was it all at one spot? Yeah. It cool. was, uh, I think, pr pretty much everyone camped out. Nice. Um, so, yeah, definitely had that, like, festival uh, camping out vibe. Yeah. Um, there was, uh, it was, I mean, maybe less of a festival than Shred Fest, where there's, like, music going until 3 a.m. every night. Yeah. Um, this one, I think it's more like... Uh, family friendly like midnight yeah uh, yeah quiet off, hours you know? <laughs> um which actually i liked uh, right. but, yeah um but i do like the music too you know for sure um but uh yeah that was a fun event so, um and then uh and then shred fest shred, shred fest. fest is gonna be sick this year oh yeah yeah i mean it's always sick it's always sick yeah it's been sick and they just continue to level up and this year um they're gonna pack the music lineup even more we're going to expand, do even more trail development. Um, nice. We've already built a couple new trails, and we've got a series of volunteer weekends. We're going to expand those trails even more. And then if you've been to Blue Mountain, been to one of the Shredfest events and seen the freestyle park, or maybe you've seen the videos of it, um, we're going to further develop the freestyle park. The landowner is going to help us bulldoze some of the mountain to set it up where we're going to have, like, the first proper freestyle, like, slope-style competition where we'll have three main clusters of features like throughout it there'll be like a drop-in zone with some features a mid zone with some features and a base zone with some features and we'll do jam sessions in each zone and there'll nice. be like podium winners for each uh zone that'll get some cash and some prizes and then off of those jams we'll seed the slope style competition where you'll have uh two runs from the top to the bottom there's a fire road that comes into the freestyle park and we're going to dress that fire road up with some features too. So you'll basically start at the top. You'll drop from the top and have two runs, top to bottom, mm -hmm. coming down. And those two runs will be scored and judged. And it might be like heats like that. And we like, or we just might run everybody through two times and, and judge and score everybody. Um, 
but it's going to be really sick and we're really excited about cool, it. Yeah. And we plan on also having the our booth will be at the freestyle park this year and we'll have a whole bunch of super fun beginner friendly features over there like small drops, bonks, little like 4x4 log ride kind of deals, you know, like little zigzaggies with like a little drop off the end, like super fun nice. low consequence bumps and features and stuff for everybody to come hang out and 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 ride. Nice little skills builder course. Exactly. Like, yeah. There was some last year there was a bunch of good little features like little mm -hmm. rails and yeah. Yeah. That Christian, S -rail. Christian Spot. Carvecraft Christian's rail is so right. sick. Yeah. A big dragon tail rail. Mm -hmm. Dude. Yeah, we want to get him involved because I want to build a couple of the features out of wood, but I want to build a couple rails. Like I want to put some handrails in there. Okay. And if we did handrails, imagine a double like barrel. Like in the woods? Like in, in the in the woods, yeah. Uh, like yeah. planted in the ground. Yeah. Uh double barrel diamond grind coping rails. Mm -hmm. Or you'll be able to lock onto it and tee mm. up and it'll down. Oh, yeah. You don't have the texture like our half pipe. Yeah. It'd be so sick. Do you like a down flat down rail or maybe I feel like flat down flat would be really sick for the one wheels. Um, and a couple other, couple other ideas like that. Because the idea Sounds is essentially fun, yeah. to make like skate park meets snowboard terrain park made for one wheels to be able to sesh. Yeah. And I think that is going to be one of the first zones for that to like really come to life so think, i'm excited for that yeah my the most entertaining trick comp i've ever watched was dirt surfers last year partially because people were just sending it yeah, super dude. hard and partially just because the location was like in the woods like where mm. do you get to see that yeah you know? totally um usually it's like a parking lot or like a skate park or a bmx park or something like having it going down in the woods, yeah. People just flying around, sending it on one wheels is it's it's sick to watch. Yeah, it's special. I'm ready for that. Cool. Well, I'm going to I'm going to the same ones. I'm gonna go to um, Oak City Shred Fest for sure out in Raleigh, North Carolina. Shout out Oak City fam. Me too. It's gonna be my, my first one. Yeah. Fuck yeah, you're yeah. going, mm -hmm. dude. Sick. Yeah. It's a really fun spot. Really amazing group of people. Um, their float track is awesome. They're putting a bunch of work into it this year. Um, and it's just, it's so cool. It's total, like, OG Float Life Fest vibes. Um, I'm so excited you're going. That's cool. Yeah. It's going to be super fun. Yeah, yeah. And there's Dirt Surfers two weeks after, like, psh, right after. I think I'm going to road trip. I like, think I might, too. Yeah. Makes sense. Especially, there's a whole bunch of stuff we got to bring back and forth. It'll probably make the most logistical sense to just send the freaking rig out at both spots. I'm excited. Dirt Surfers is going to be sick this year. I think they're going to do another freestyle event like they did last year, like we were just talking about. Be fun, yeah. They're going to do the racing similarly, enduro style chips, trails. Um, I'll change it up a little bit this year. But I'm really excited for that one. It's going to be sick. Um, so, in terms of events and riding, you kind of got to be on your game. You know, you got to be somewhat in shape, ready to ride, tuned up as some might say, what, what do you do in your day-to-day? -day? Cause honestly, you're one of the people in my life that's actually like disciplined and has like realistically worked into their life exercise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you've like made it work and I respect that about you and that's awesome. And so I'm curious, what, what do you do to stay like ready to ride? Like what are kind of a couple of your go-to just nimbleness things to stay mobile and stay ready to ride? Yeah, um, I think, I mean, one thing everybody could be doing is just doing body weight squats, mm -hmm. just getting your feet planted on the ground and just squatting down so that your butt touches your heels or almost touches your heels. Yeah. When we did the bonk clinic, we, or sorry, Bali clinic, <laughs> uh, we, we, we found that the thing people were struggling with the most was just being able to crouch down and stay right. balanced on their board. Yeah. Because they, you know, they crouch down and veer to the left or right. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, squatting is just such like a fundamental skill that like everybody should be able to do. Um, it's like half the world, that's how they go to the bathroom. You know? Right. So it's like… Yeah, pooping in think, holes. Yeah, just really important. Um, but for me, it's like exercising is not really necessarily that fun. Right. So for me, what mo motivates me is just finding ways to make it fun. Right. Um, so, you know, I 
I'm part of a rock climbing gym. That's a really good way. Uh, just every time I go, I'm always motivated to go, you know, walk the slack line or yeah. uh, do the rings or go climbing. Um, and just having different, uh, like, little balance training devices, like balance board. Got my gibboard. Um, the, uh, the wobble cushion, like, that the float life um, yeah. balance board came on. Uh, mm-hmm. Those are all things I just have at my house that, you know, I just see them, like, on my floor, and I'm just motivated to go do stuff on them. Right. Because um, it's fun. It's not, like, yeah. going all the way to the gym, going back in the locker, going on the step machine, going and doing some pull-ups, sitting down, doing some whatever workouts you do at the gym. Because I'm similar, too. Like, I, I have a hard time going to the gym to be my exercise like i've, mm-hmm. I've got to make my exercise fun and outdoor and active and my go-to yeah. is cross training with other board sports yeah because a lot of the board sports use like the same muscles in your legs and your ankles and your calves and your back and your core yeah. you're swinging your arms around um and so i definitely like skateboarding is one of the most all-time workouts and cardio things you don't get much love for your upper body but um, I think, yeah, like when skating you fall, and balance you to... trainers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Falling is your push-ups. Yeah. <laughs> 100%. Do you do any kind of like specific stretches or stretching or yoga or any kind of that stuff? Yeah, I do like to warm up. I really like dynamic stretching, which is where you're moving. Like I'll stand on one leg and just swing my other leg back and forth. Yep. Um, and then usually I'm a lot more motivated to do your typical static stretching, um, like either like at the end of the day or at the end of a workout, like mm-hmm. kind of when I'm just trying to cool down and wind down. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I don't, I mean, there, there's a ton of stretches that I do. I don't know if we have mm-hmm. the space to really <laughs> do some demonstrations. <laughs> like, we can make it work. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's just basic ones. Maybe… Uh, well, what, what parts… Well, answer this for me real quick. What parts of your body do you think are, like, crucial to stretch before you ride? Like, what should you for sure be stretching before you ride? Well, I think the main thing I notice stretching while I'm riding is uh, my ankles. Not, not like, side to side, mm-hmm. but just like knee coming over the toe. Yeah. Okay, um, yeah. So, that one… I don't know if you necessarily need to do it before because i just feel as soon as i start carving like i feel um those muscles Mm -hmm. but the other thing about one wheeling is that it's really asymmetrical right like nobody rides switch 50 percent of the time right Mm -hmm. so you're gonna be looking more towards one side and like for me my rear ankle gets stretched a lot more than my front one um so it, it could be good just to do some stretches just to like even it out right. at least. Um, I mean, like just downward dog is a really good uh, calf stretch. Um, you know, just you got to get your hip stretches and stretch your quads. Um, I like uh, also stretching my quads, um, just standing up on one foot. Any stretch where I'm like balancing on one foot, I feel like also warms me up just my sense of balance yeah like um it's like a sense that kind of needs to be warmed up as well Mm -hmm. if you're just like sitting down for three hours and just hop on might take a second for your balance to be like at its full potential yeah or a few minutes not seconds uh and uh so yeah i really like doing stretches where i'm just kind of standing on one foot um just to get uh wake up my balance right as well yeah, yeah that's sick um that's but yeah mo- mostly legs you know for one wheeling um definitely yeah your upper body doesn't get a lot just like skateboarding right um i feel like it's pretty important to get the back going though get some back stretches in right yeah you know because like you're slightly twisted most of the time and i was talking to drew over at um wheel fun stuff in san diego and he he's studying this type of rehabilitation that's kind of in the same realm of like chiropractic or like acupuncture or like those like muscle 
bone resetting and re-sculpting things. And what he does is he works with the tissue that holds your muscles together. And he was talking about how one-wheelers, since we are always, we're on our boards and then we're looking forward this way, we always have this like rotation in our hips that halves like all the way up in here can get kind of tweaked. Um, and there's like certain exercises and stretches and stuff that you can do to kind of like balance all that back out. Um, yeah, he's a really good, he knows a lot. He's like studying body mechanics. Um, he did like a personal training session with me when he visited here. Like we went to my gym and he showed me a lot of exercises that I still, uh, do like regularly. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of a lot of core, a lot of like um, balance and mobility stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he works like all that massage into it as yep. well. Um, yeah, dude. If you need info or work and you're in the San Diego area, work on your body, hit up Drew. Big time. We'll put his information around us in the description. He's a great dude. Um, he knows a lot about bodies and stuff. He's really, I don't know if you remember, you had a small cameo in a video I was doing on how to improve your balance. Mm-hmm. And uh, I made that video after talking with Drew, and he taught me a few things about your foot and, like, the um, the parts of your foot that, that really are in contact with the ground. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've learned a lot from Drew. That's rad. Yeah. Yeah, he's good people. He's good people for sure. It's pretty crazy how how deep the body goes and like how much how many like little stretches and exercises and workouts and little like herbal little remedies and things you can do to like really optimize your body but seeking out that information and finding all that stuff is a little a little tricky it's the journey of life you know but yeah. um yeah body's a temple dude got to take care of it i definitely would say i don't do the best best job of proper warm-ups because I've been told that it's best to maybe stretch a little bit, but like start doing whatever you're going to do to like get your blood flowing and activate those areas and then stretch and then really go hard. And I will approach with that mentality and then fully ADHD out and just (laughs) ride, just get to it and not even stretch at all. I'm like the classic going snowboarding, thinking about stretching the whole time. And then next thing I know, I'm strapping in in my first run. And I'm like, oh, shit. And I just do like a little quick top of the mountain stretch. little leg swing. I used to do that leg swing with my uh, my groms. I, used, I was a snowboard coach for a whole season. Okay. And I had a little group of eight middle schoolers. And uh, we would stretch before every every session. And the, the leg swing was, was one of our go-tos as one of our dynamics. Um. Yeah, I, I also, yeah, I like to do a lot of movement when I'm warming up. I'm also not that flexible. Mm-hmm. So someone who stretches a lot and, like, is really flexible and it's, like, a priority for them, um, you, they would probably want to stretch, you know, uh, you know, static stretching, like, before a workout. Yeah. Um, for me, it's, it's definitely something I'm, you know, it's not my strongest point. Um it's hard so to be disciplined it, about stretching, dude. Yeah. Um, but for for me, I think it's more important to get the blood flowing. Right. Um, get the brain bef- Before uh, exercise. Yeah. Um, and just, yeah, my warm-ups, I just try to do a lot of movements that are, like, easy for me. Yeah. And not just jump into movements that are really difficult right away. Yeah. That's, like, kind of where you hurt yourself and can get uh, just overuse injuries. Um, tendonitis and things like that. Right. Um, and uh, honestly, walking, if you've just been sitting down for four hours or something, walking is like just such a good way to warm your body up from that super cold state. Yeah. Because it's just so fundamental. Everybody walks. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's... Uh, your body walks. Yeah. <laughs> Well, sorry, that's actually not true. Everybody um, shits. <laughs> Wait, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> not true, actually. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, handicapped people, we love you. Um, almost for most most of you watching, walking is pretty familiar. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, it, it is you you can actually hurt yourself really easily um, if if you're already one wheeling 20 miles a day every day you know it's it's not necessarily something that you need to warm up for because it's right. just so familiar to mm-hmm. you um, but if you're riding a couple times a week a few times a month probably a good idea to do a little stretching warming up before you ride yeah i think that's that's where a lot of people hurt themselves is they don't realize oh i've just been sitting down all day i'm like you know so stiff right now yeah um and just do a, a little bit of movement um you know but yeah maybe you fall off your one wheel and have to like run it out and that and you pull something mm-hmm. uh you know, just like a like a seven mile an hour run out or something yeah um so yeah it really does help to warm up and if if your warm-ups are fun then there's you know you're not going to be like forcing yourself to yeah. to do them like, oh, damn. you know but yeah if it's damn. like a situation where you're about to go ride and you're like oh i should you know do this before you're going to be like mm, i want to go ride <laughs> yeah. yeah um <laughs> So it's tough, but it is important. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's one of those things where you you won't be totally fooked if you don't do it. But if you do it, you're totally setting yourself up, keeping yourself nimble, healthy, safer, faster. Yeah, you'll just ride better. You yeah. know, if you take the time to uh, exercise. Like one thing about one wheeling is that the range of motion is not that much like even if right. you do bend your knees a lot and get close to the ground when you're riding you're just, you're still not going to be doing like the full range of motion that your body um can do yeah so, you're hardly ever like turning back the other way especially when you're riding forward yeah it's a pretty like omni uni unidirectional sport for most like i ride switch pretty often but not like not probably the time realistically and... probably like 10 percent of the time yeah probably you know, the same, maybe yeah. maybe even lower yeah because it's like i'll sometimes pop and do a little sex change and be switch and cruise around carve or do like a little back one and just go switch for a while mm-hmm. or like a lot of times if i'm just with slower riders i'll just jump into switch and ride switch just to keep it fun and carby um but yeah most most of us are riding our comfortable stance direction facing forward and then you, you turn a little bit and get off. <laughs> yeah. W- one thing I try to do to combat that is like whenever I slack line, I go switch. Okay. Uh, that was in air quotes for anyone listening, but you know, I'm <laughs> goofy. So I usually look to the right. So when I get on the slack line, I'm standing sideways. I try to look to the left uh, a lot of the time when I'm huh. uh, doing that. And actually, like my. Sick. Before I started doing that, my sense of balance was actually really closely tied to looking in that direction. Yeah. Especially when my feet are in a position like they would be on a board. Right. Like when I would turn to the left on the slack line, I would get super wobbly. Like I was actually riding switch. Yeah. Um, even And that was all from just the board sport experience. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah I try to even that out on the on that's, the slack line that's such a good way to do that yeah um slack line I've, i think slack line is the best way to improve your balance overall um you heard it here folks yeah um i don't know if i should plug it but i just put out a plug video um, on this slack line balance training device called the gibboard sake um it's pretty much just like the best way to learn how to slack line it's you that just, like skateboard slack line. Yeah, it right? looks like a it looks like a like a snow a skate strap almost. for your snowboard or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, it's um, crazy looking. Things fun. But, I've messed around on it a little bit. They've got one at the wheel fun spot too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kyle's uh, really good on it. He's just it's like a cat. Just, yeah, yeah. Kyle's so balancey. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, the gibboard. Sick, dude. Well, do you have any uh, any big plans or ideas or goals or? ambitions you want to share for this year or just any intentions maybe well i did i want to travel a lot um Mm -hmm. i want to hit all those events um and yeah maybe like find a way to kind of fund those travel expenses (laughs) yeah um 
I don't know, just thinking about doing like maybe in person demos of stuff like the Gibboard or other products. Right. Um, I've been just on my channel, just been kind of reaching out to companies that have things that are not one wheel related that I just think look cool and fun and like right. uh, starting to review those. Sick. Um, I really enjoy your review videos. You do a good job of like reviewing things and testing them and showing them. Thanks. Yeah. Especially anything, yeah, body mechanics related. Like, yeah. I really try to just, yeah, try to give like a good picture of what it's actually like to, to have one and to, to ride it. Or, right. Um, cause it's hard just watching a video. You don't, yeah. You don't get the full experience. You don't get, yeah, exactly what it's like. Um, and, uh, so yeah, doing more of that. Um, want to try to branch out. I got a lot of ideas. <laughs> yeah, <I bet. laughs> Too many ideas. Yeah, like, None of them ever. What can I say on a podcast fruition. though? <laughs> hey, TMGI is what they yeah. say. Too many good ideas. I know. I know the same. I got the same struggle. So much shit floating around in your head. You want to do and pursue and test and try and figure out and mm. experience. Well, sick man. I hope you have a an amazing year this year. I know you will. Thanks, man. You, you always do a good job. What's of getting uh, out. any anything uh, up and coming for you? Dude. Helping out Joey with Let It Ride. Helping Oak City homies with Oak City. We're going to be a part helping with the dirt surfer stuff in any way we can. I'm sure they're going to uh, want some help with their freestyle thing. So I'm definitely uh, pretty invested in some of these events this year. Just trying to make them as fun and badass as I can. and Like add whatever I can to it. Um, and then I also want to do some traveling. We did that Hawaii trip last year. Me and Elijah went and met up with Jesse on the big island. Yeah. Um, Actually, that project file got lost when I was almost done with it, and I had to restart it. But I'm about halfway through the re-edit. Did you hear oh, about that? Oh, no. Dude, oh, my God. I did a full computer reset. Didn't grab… I grabbed the wrong file. I had accidentally copied the project file. And it was in, like, a weird autosave folder. And so I grabbed the file that I thought was my project file and wiped my whole computer. And then put everything back, opened that file, and all my footage was sorted… And there's Damn. no timelines, no cuts. I had five of six episodes up edited. Oh, I thought… You, I dude, knew you had at least two or three. Dude, I had five. Yeah. So now I, I cha wow. kind of changed the whole vision of, of the edit. And oh, I'm like halfway they through. They were like so deep. The edits too. And they were like, good, right? Yeah. I showed you guys a couple of them. They are fire. But oh, no. yeah, so that was, a, that was a tough… That was a massive pill to swallow. It felt like I swallowed a banana. But… <laughs> The re edits are going to be. Damn, that, that is rough. That the is one of like my least favorite things is losing, losing a whole bunch of work. Because oh, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, there's literally nothing you can do about it. You just got to, like, okay, cool. I'm going to restart. So, Damn. that that's going well. And I want to do something else this year again. Because that was really fun doing like a 10 We went for 10 days, um, did two like buffer travel days, and Eight, seven or eight of those days, we were just like going on two or three missions a day, just like yeah. cruising around, filming, riding. And there was a lot of takeaways from that mission. Like, we need more boards. Our microphone mm. was fucked up right when we got there. So, like, bringing an extra microphone. We shipped boards out, but they got sent back. That was yeah, kind of the fucked up thing about it, yeah. that one. So, that was kind of somewhat unavoidable, but um, definitely want to do at least one bigger, like, team trip, maybe a uh, strike mission. Um, but go somewhere fun and unique. Even like, honestly, like you said, Austin earlier, Austin's mm -hmm. big on my mind for a film trip. Yeah. Like Austin or Miami. Miami's cool. I feel yeah. like those would be six spots to go on like a, like a week and a half, week, week and a half, just strike mission film trip. We're just there to find trails and find spots. Miami has a lot of cool riding. Yeah. I like bet. street and trails. Everyone's yeah. at Stokebird right now. Oh. In so Miami. Shout out Stokebird. Shout out Stokebird, homies. Sorry we couldn't be know. there. Shout out Corey. Putting on a good event. Stokebird's basically like a giant cluster of group rides. Is what I've heard is like the style of that event. There's okay. like… There's just multiple group rides throughout the weekend. And you can come to them. You cannot. You can do whatever. But it's like… That's kind of the vibe of that. It's just like a bunch of fun group rides all weekend. In different spots all around Florida. There's a lot of good spots. I mean like Wynwood. Talking about street art before. Wynwood is like the capital of street art of… You know, the whole country, because that's where they do Art Basel. Right. So it's just an entire neighborhood of Florida roof murals. Like, yeah. it's crazy. So sick. Yeah. 
So, a lot of cool bars too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they have uh, like Virginia Keys. I think it is has one of the craziest trail systems I've I've seen. It's like got the wooden Virginia roller Keys. coasters and. Uh, oh, okay. I think yeah. I've probably seen some footage of that. Yeah. The Florida, the Florida, the Florida Bentonville. Basically, Florida, yeah. Kinda. I mean, it's small. It's it doesn't have miles and miles of trails like that. There's no Walmart there pumping millions. It's a, li- into it's it. a little island, yeah. Yeah, uh, that's cool. Yeah, sick, man. Well, yeah, that's kind of what's on my mind this year. Try to get some some heavy riding in, hit these events, support them in every way we can, and just have tons of fun. I'm I'm really trying to get deeper into music, pursuing music, learning to mix it. Um, I really want to learn to produce it and just make make beats make music express myself musically i watch my friends like colton the guy sitting behind these cameras helps us with this podcast is one of the sickest djs and producers and just like watching him create music that makes me feel the way i feel is extremely inspirational to me and it's always been something that i've been intrigued by because my my dad's a drummer my mom's a singer my grandpa's a bluegrass musician i've been surrounded by music but i've always been super focused on shredding and creating media and content and i'm just super inspired towards music lately and colton's a very kind and loving dude he's like down to help me out and teach me some stuff i've got another homie of mine logan becker a childhood friend that's also down to help me out um and so i'm just so freaking pumped on that right now and i my goal my dream is to be able to make some of the music for my videos that's kind of one of my goals for music other than to be able to just do it and have it be a part of my life is like be able to do some of the writing and the shooting and score the the videos would be just way too sick and then also be able to play music at these one wheel events for everybody bring some tracks to the table bring the vibes up and also have that ability to just have my usb on me and 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 play music for people and show music the show people some of the music that i like and bring the vibes up so that's a big focus for me this year outside of one wheeling and shredding and filming in my main creative passion and is uh is getting up into the music. I know you like music. You've oh, always yeah. been beatboxing and drumming and yeah, talking about rhythm. doing music for the next uh, trick video. Yeah. Like, I kind of want to do like my own song for my next part. Sick. Like, just, you know, beatboxing and yep. yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, dude. You should have freaking Colton mix and master that thing. You'll make it sound fire. Hell yeah. For one thousand dollar. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, well, yeah. We should probably, you know, get out of here. I gotta get back to work. So yeah. if people don't already follow you, which if you're not, are you living under a rock? Uh, where can people find you, Mr. Jake? Uh Jake Leary on YouTube and Jake underscore one wheel on Instagram. Excellent. You're on a TikToker? No, I'm not on TikTok. I'm too old. No. <laughs> too old for the TikTok. Uh, shoot. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Definitely go check out Jake's page. I love his Instagram. He posts sweet clips and fun, just like stuff around Sacramento. Um, his YouTube is great. He does a lot of product reviews and one wheel riding um, and instructional stuff. So definitely don't sleep on Jake. Follow his stuff. Support the man. Um, if you're ever at an event or something, you see a class or a clinic or a talk by him, pull up. He's got great things to say. Um, if you don't follow me yet, slipping uh, at Bodie Harrison on Instagram um, or uh, about a GTS is the camera page. And I hope you guys have an excellent day. Please, please down in the comments, let us know what you want to see on the channel. Let us know what you want us to talk about in the podcast. Let us know who you want us to have on. Uh, we've got lots of ideas. We've got lots of camera and motivation to make you content. But we also want to know what you want to see. So please let us know. Like and subscribe if you haven't yet. And what do they need to do? Float on, my friends. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.